On this first question, we're asked how many sigma and pi bonds there are in this molecule shown. The correct answer is A. If you want to know why, stay tuned right now. How many sigma and pi bonds are there in this molecule? In order to answer this properly, I think it is easier to start out by actually drawing out all of the bonds. So I'm going to go ahead and write down equals. That uh, When I draw three lines there, that means super equals. I think it's also called logical, logically equivalent to or some other dang thing. I'm not sure. But I'm going to go ahead and draw this thing out with all the bonds showing. So I've got a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to a carbon. That's bonded singly to three separate hydrogens. Now, let's count up the number of sig sigma bonds. Remember, every single time you have a single bond, that is a sigma bond. So I've got one sigma, two sigma, three sigma, four sigma, five sigma, six sigma. So I'll go ahead and write that down here. Now, what about the double bond? Remember, every single double bond contains a sigma bond and a pi bond. So embedded in that double bond, one of those two lines is a sigma and the other represents a pi. So I actually have one more sigma coming off of the double bond and I have a pi. Which means that the final answer is seven sigma bonds and one pi bond. Thank you. Have an enjoyable day. In this next question, we're asked to correctly describe the hybridization of a carbon-carbon double bond. The correct answer is B. If you want to know why, stay tuned right now. Okay, for this question, it's talking about a carbon-carbon double bond. Here's a carbon-carbon double bond. Hi, it's good to meet you. What in the world is the hybridization in a carbon-carbon double bond? I'll just pick one of these carbons. What is its hybridization? And I'll go ahead and throw on some hydrogens just for the fun of it. Hybridization. In order to determine that, I have to count how many things are around that carbon. I've got a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a carbon. That's three things. So the hybridization around that guy is sp2. SP2. The same thing is going to be true about that carbon over there. Now what in the world does SP2 really mean? What that means is that that carbon took its single outermost S orbital and hybridized it with two of its P orbitals. So the correct answer to this question is actually hybridization between an S orbital and two P orbitals. That's what that thing means. In this third question we're asked from which orbitals pi bonds are formed? The correct answer is A. If you want to know why, stay tuned. I want us to go back to our carbon-carbon double bond. Imagine what in the world is going on with the hybridization here. Well, as I pointed out earlier, this carbon is sp2 hybridized, as is this one. That means that each carbon took its outermost s orbital and two of its p orbitals and squished them together and then laid it out to make three individual sp2 orbitals. Now, you'll notice that in the outermost p shell, there are actually three p orbitals. There's, an S, there's one that traverses the x-axis, one that traverses the y-axis, and one that traverses the z-axis. We've only used two of them, which means that the third p orbital gets left unused. Where in the world does that third p orbital go? Well, it hovers like this over each carbon atom. It's uh, 90 degrees to the plane. If, if this carbon-carbon double bond is, is in the plane, then this extra p orbital is perpendicular to the plane, if that makes sense. So what in the world is a pi uh, bond? Well, a pi bond in reality occurs when two p orbitals kind of lean together. We've got these uh, lobes up here leaning together. And then the lobes down here leaning together. And when they do that, they form kind of like a little cute little bridge. And we draw it like that. This looks like a circuit. And that circuit is indeed one pi bond. So a pi bond is formed by two p orbitals overlapping. In this next question, we're asked how to describe the orbitals required to form a pi bond. The correct answer is D. If you'd like to know why, stay tuned. OK, continuing our discussion about this pi bond thing, it asks which of the following best describe the orbitals required to make a pi bond. The first option says, is it parallel overlap of two s orbitals? Well, that's complete nonsense. It's not. It's two p orbitals. Is it overlap of one s and one p? No. Is it perpendicular overlap of two p orbitals? Now, what that means is, are the two p orbitals that are overlapping perpendicular to each other? In other words, did I have this kind of thing going on? No. 
Is it parallel overlap of two p orbitals? Are the two p orbitals parallel that are overlapping, leaning in on each other to make a pi bond? Yes, they are. That is the correct answer. And in this last question, we're asked to determine the hybridization of beryllium and beryllium hydride. The correct answer is A. And once again, if you want to know why, stay tuned right now. For our last problem, we're given this molecule beryllium dihydride, or beryllium hydride. Beryllium hydride. Beryllium hydride. This molecule, beryllium hydride. What is the hybridization of beryllium in this molecule? In order to figure that out, we have to actually draw a Lewis structure of it. You'll notice that beryllium on the periodic table is in column two, which means he has two valence electrons, and each hydrogen has one valence electron. They plug those things in there. I convert that into a magical Lewis structure, and I've got this nice, beautiful linear molecule here, molecule here beryllium dihydride. What is the hybridization around that beryllium? I use the same approach that I have with all of my other atoms. How many things are attached to that beryllium? Well, I've got a hydrogen to the left, I've got a hydrogen to the right. I don't have any lone pairs, so it's two. So what is the hybridization? It's S, there's only one left, P1. In other words, it's SP. Now that wraps it up for this answer key video. Don't worry, I've got another one ready to go for my next section of MCAT videos, which I hope you enjoy. Until then, have a great rest of your day.